Um, sorry, I'm very ill today, so I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with my voice. Uh, yes, I'm coming from the Research Institute for Cryptoeconomics that is based at the Vienna University of Economics and Business. And um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity actually to be here and to present briefly what we are doing because the last meeting of the uh, um, of this community took place exactly in Vienna in spring 2018 and we were sitting in a small room with around 25 or 30 people so it's growing and growing and I'm very happy about that. Um, so um, we as a research institute were founded uh, around one year ago with a mission to conduct interdisciplinary research around the blockchain paradigm in technology, economics, business and law. We are not only the classical research institute in a sense that we do not only publish the scientific papers, which we of course also have to do, uh, but we also cooperate with the different startups and with the uh, industrial partners and of course with the uh, universities in Austria and abroad. So this is our research agenda, uh, which is um, divided into four parts. The first one, which is uh, now central um, and the most important for us, are the microeconomic foundations of the token economy. And here we have the researchers that are doing the game theory, the incentive design, um, monetary uh, theory and agent-based modeling. So all the things that are actually at the core of the token economy. Then we also cover the technical aspects such as scalability and security issues of the networks. Um, we at the University of Business and, um, and Economics, that's why we are very active in the uh, research regarding the blockchain applications together with our industrial partners. For example, we have now an exciting project about blockchain and sustainability. So how can you program the tokens in order to incentivize the sustainable behavior? Um, we're also active in supply chain and trade finance field and identity in the business uh, process research. And um, legal aspects are also very important. That's why around fourth of our researchers uh, coming from the um, legal uh, perspective and they also cooperate with the policy makers to understand how to regulate the whole thing. So um, talking um, a little bit about the token economy and the token engineering, this is a very new uh, direction for our research institute that we started a couple of months ago. And what we started from, we started to look what is actually over there and um, how can we structure and do a kind of the taxonomy of the tokens. So um, tokens is not a new thing because the term was used also before the blockchain arrived. Um, it was used in economics as just a small and flat, you know, around piece of plastic or metal that um, uh, can sometimes be used instead of money, for example, in casino or with the uh, uh, in the Middle Ages with the Knights and Knights tokens that the Knights were carrying these pieces of uh, metal and used them within the specific ceremonies. Uh, in the economic sense, token is a limited legal tender, so a promise to be exchanged for something of the value in the future. Um, token is also used as the uh, part of the loyalty program as the voucher gift card. In computing, token means something different. It's just an object in software and hardware that represents the right to perform some operation. Now talking about the blockchain token, there is no unified definition of actually what is it. Here are just a couple of them that we find um, useful. So from a technical perspective, um, token is implemented as a list um, of blockchain uh, addresses or user accounts that have a number associated with them, together with, first of all, a set of methods used to manipulate that list to transfer end tokens from A to B and rules to determine who can manipulate the list and in which way. Um, another simplified definition is token as a digital asset that can be transferred uh, between two parties uh, without requiring the consent of any other uh, third party. The most important point here is that token has definitely a technological perspective. Without technological perspective, it, uh, it doesn't go to program it. But it's not only a technological term. It's not only a technological construct, it's a socio-technological construct. So from the technological component, 
components, it's an entry in a blockchain database. And from the social thought perspective or socioeconomic perspective, it's reason why it exists, it's reason to be, and it is defined by an agreement between a group of people. And in this sense, token represents some aspect of the relationships between individual members of the group. And here, as a lot of previous speakers already have mentioned, the central thing and the reason why the tokens are becoming the killer application of the blockchain are the power of incentives, because you can program them in a certain ways and you can make with them people to, to do some stuff. But how to do that, it's not only a technological question, that's a question where you need the researchers, that's why we have also 30 associated researchers from different perspectives that are going to work on that. Uh, right now, from the scientific point of view, um, there is no clear taxonomy of the tokens, and we decided um, that we could look at them from four different perspectives. The technical perspective, the rights perspective, so which types of rights are added to the token, from the legal perspective, how is it regulated, and from the fungibility perspective, fungible and not fungible. So from the technical perspective, maybe um, it's not new for for, for lots of you, so I'm just um, uh, going quickly. Um, there are protocol tokens. Um, these are the tokens that incentivize um, the users to behave um, in a sense of the protocol. It can be block validation incentives as a minor reward. Um, it can be transaction spam prevention as in Ripple, for example. The app um, tokens, they are issued on the application layers. Um, they are standardized um, with the different standards, um, the famous ERC-20, and um, they can represent few lines of codes, many lines of codes, and so on. Uh, these app tokens can represent the physical good, the digital good, or some right to perform an action in a network or in the real world. The rights perspective is about what types of rights are actually attached to the token. And in this sense, we can, um, we can say that there are passive tokens and active tokens. So passive tokens, they uh, have just the right to, they transmit the right to an underlying economic value. Security token is the most famous example of that, but also asset-backed um, tokens and currency tokens. Um, there are also active tokens or access or activity rights. Um, so this is when token is required to participate in a network that no third party controls. Here we have usage tokens, so tokens that are required to use as a service. The most uh, famous examples are Bitcoin or Ether, so they don't give you any uh, a uh, right, but um, they give you just a right to use the network. The work tokens uh, give users the right to contribute work and earn in exchange for their work. Um, again, this is not, as we can say, okay, one token is usage token and um, the other one is a work token. There is no clear border between these types because even if we think about the ether, uh, tackling the example before, it is a usage token, but in the moment when um, the Ethereum uh, comes from proof of work to proof of stake, it becomes also the work token. There are also reputation reward tokens, so they give their users, their owners, the privileged right to do something within the network. The interesting part <coughs> is the fungibility perspective, because exactly non-fungible tokens are seen as the kill application of the blockchain and they open doors to numerous digitized um, assets. So what is fungibility? Fungibility is ability of a currency to maintain a standard value and uniform acceptance. So meaning that a history of a currency does not affect its value and each piece of that currency is equal in value to every other piece. So 10 euros in my pockets are, have exactly the same value as 10 euros in your pocket. Uh, so fungible tokens, they are just cash alike, basically. Um, they are indistinguishable and um, they can be merged or divided into larger or smaller amounts, making them indistinguishable. The non-fungible tokens, that's an interesting part because these are the blockchain assets that are designed to not be equal. And basically, they represent 
the standardized ownership of a certain category of asset, but the assets within that category can have very different market value. For example, the ownership of a house. We both A and B own the house, so the same ownership, but the value of the house is very different. And we have a lot of assets that's actually very different. That's why there are numerous use cases for these non-fungible tokens. Some of the examples are collectibles or piece of arts. I don't know, CryptoKitties is the early example of that. Um, online gaming, because games uh, very often include um, selling and buying assets that have different value attached to them, the tickets, real estate, identity, and so on and so forth. So from the legal perspective, that's absolutely not my field, but international regulators are still trying to understand and classify different token types and to treat them accordingly. There are tokens that are seen as a currencies and they are accordingly regulated by the financial market authorities and there are also securities that are not physical assets and um, they fall under the security law. Now what we are doing with um, the token engineering topic at our institute. As I said, um, very, very new topic. So we decided first of all to make some working packages out of it. And we um, first tried to identify similarities between the models that we already have in macro and microeconomics within the existing systems and try to think if these models can be applied to model also crypto economic systems or we need some in you and um, where can we learn from the existing models. We also aim to formalize the network design and the network evaluation models based on existing economic and mathematical models. We um, right now developing a taxonomy for this new emerging scientific field. Uh, we um, are going to design a bottom-up token engineering framework um, and, of course, summarize all that in the scientific papers that we are going to publish. Um, so these are kind of the first atoms to map the research questions. And here, um, uh, not as a very classical research institute, we uh, created the uh, Google Doc with them. This is a living document and we are very, very interested in uh, exchanging with the community, with the people that are actually designing that and not only with the researchers. So I will share the presentation and um, and if you are interested, just look at it. These are just uh, now, for now, these are the list of 40 research questions. And if you would like to comment, to contribute or to give some examples for them, please feel free to do that. So that's a kind of the call for action. Um, so thank you uh, for listening and um, yes, we have a lot of social media and you can track all our activities there. Thank you. <laughs>